I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Greetings all and welcome to Savage Reality. This is part two of my Agenda 2030 series covering the 17 goals for transforming our world, the 17 sustainable development goals as decided by the United Nations in part and parcel of Agenda 21's next phase of implementation with Agenda 2030. If you've already listened to part one, then you're up to speed. If you have not listened to part one, I will of course provide a link in the description bar as I provide links to all articles, videos, etc. that I cover in any video that I do in the description tab for your perusal. So here we are with goal number two, zero hunger. Imagine the world in 2030 fully inclusive of persons with disabilities. I gotta tell you this, that, that, that it is such double speak. They don't want people with disabilities or maybe they're going to have people on uh, brain chips by then. Who knows? Now, in fact, I'm going to have some videos coming out about, uh, Chipping very soon here at this coming, probably next week. Uh, I'm filming this on Sunday, the 15th of April 2018. Would have had it out earlier, but I've been under the weather of late. So here we go. Let's continue, shall we? Goal two end hunger, achieve food security, and improve nutrition and, imp and promote sustainable agriculture. The bullet point, bullet point targets are. By 2030, end hunger and ensure access by all people. In particular, the poor and people in vulnerable situations, including infants, to safe, nutritious, and sufficient food all year round. On the surface, it sounds very nice, does it not? It's, we want to take care of everybody. But as many of us already know, in order to take care of everybody, the taxes for everybody would have to go up sufficiently because in order to get these foods to everyone on the planet, the uh, logistics of getting the food around would uh, be quite a daunting task. And in fact, uh, starting off right now, we have a little bit of a video from a TED Talk I'd like to share with you. See, that's the image many people have when we talk about global hunger. But hunger isn't just in refugee camps. Hunger is a global epidemic, affecting communities in sub-Saharan Africa, in Asia, and even in the developed world. It's estimated that there are over 800 million hungry people in the world. And 18 million of those people live in cities in North America, Europe, and Australia. See, when most people talk about global hunger, they think that the problem is that there isn't enough food in the world. But the problem isn't the lack of food, because the absurd thing is, is that there actually is enough food in the world to feed the entire population. See, the problem isn't the lack of food. Hunger is a logistics problem. It is a problem of getting the available food to the people that need it most. It is a problem that affects all aspects of the supply chain. It includes the elements such as storage, transportation, packaging, international shipping, customs, things such as the road networks and tracking and visibility capabilities. It's estimated that about a third of the food produced in the world is wasted. Some of it rots in warehouses awaiting transportation to the market, while some of it rots at ports and border crossings awaiting customs clearance. And then some of it just rots in the field because the farmers do not think it's economically worth it for them to harvest it. In India, for example, 30 percent of the fruits and vegetables that are harvested rot before they get to the people that need them most because they lack proper cold storage facilities. And every year, farmers in sub-Saharan Africa lose 30 to 40 percent of their crops after harvesting to insects, rodents, rain, and mold. 
In Africa, it's estimated that about that the food that goes to waste could feed up to 49 million people, which I think is a shame. But you see, to me, this is not just about statistics. I was born and raised in Kenya, a country where agriculture is the backbone of a very diverse and bustling economy. But people still go hungry there, and food rots in the farms because farmers just don't have access to a proper supply chain to get their surpluses to the market. All right. Before anybody jumps my case about putting a TED Talks up, I'm, I'm hypercritical of TED Talks for the most part, though they do tell you what they're going to do.、Uh, quite often, the the controllers of this society, civilization we find ourselves in, they will use. TED Talk as a means of letting you know what's coming,、um, whether we're actually paying attention and listening is quite another thing. A lot of double talk going on at TED Talks for the most part.、Um, a lot of a lot of deceit going on there. But anyway, let's continue on. So, shall we?、Uh, bullet point number two: By 2030, end all forms of malnutrition, including achieving by 2025 to internationally agreed upon targets on stunting. And wasting in children under five years of age, and address the nutritional needs of adolescent girls, pregnant and lactating women, and older persons.、Uh, agreed upon term targets. So, what does the、uh, actual United Nations Agenda 2030 homepage say about the means of implementation of these things? So, I'm not going to read all of, all these,、uh, you know, 77 points they've got here. I'm just going to go over a couple of them real quick. Uh, means of implementation number thirty-nine. The scale and ambition of the new agenda requires a revitalized global partnership to ensure its implementation. We fully commit to this. This partnership will work in a spirit of global solidarity, in particular solidarity with the poorest and with people in vulnerable situations. It will facilitate an intensive global engagement in support. Of implementation of all goals and targets, bringing other governments, the private sector, civil society, the United Nations systems, and other actors, and mobilizing all available resources. Now, of course, other actors doesn't necessarily mean actors, but if you do notice, a lot of people that、uh, speak at the United Nations. They 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 come from Hollywood. If you've noticed, you got Leonardo DiCaprio, you get、um, Angelina Jolie, you've gotten、um, I think that Emma Watson chick. So it is interesting, isn't it? They they do use the actors because a lot of、uh, dumbed down people, whatever an actor says, it, it's it's might as well be the voice of God.、Um, continuing, let's move to point number forty one. We recognize that each country has primary responsibility for its own economic and social development. The new agenda deals with the means required for implementation of the goals and targets. We recognize that these will include the mobilization of financial resources, as well as capacity building and transfer of environmentally sound technologies to developing countries on favorable terms. Including on concessional and preferential terms as mutually agreed, public finance, both domestic and international, will play a vital role in providing essential services and public goods, and in catalyzing other sources of finance. We acknowledge the role of the diverse private sector, ranging from micro enterprises to cooperatives to multinationals. And that of civil society organizations and philanthropic organizations in the implementation of the new agenda. Lots of the, to take in there, lots to digest.、Um, but again, it comes down to taking taxes from the "quote unquote" first world, transferring it to the third world, where all these countries, such as Africa, are very poor and don't have these、uh, technologies. But of course, the favorable terms will be that these countries in which they receive these new technologies will more than likely have to, as I said, including concessions of preferential terms. Now, most of you who are aware of Monsanto, 
and, the, and then are aware of the Terminator seed, know exactly what I'm talking about. If that is one of the favorable terms, I just a, just a guess. Maybe I, maybe I'm you know one of those conspiracy guys, but I just have a strong sense that the favorable terms will be favorable to the globalists, to the power elite, to the multinational corporations. And um, I think um, Bill Gates had something to say about some of these things in the past. Let's, in 2010, he talked on TED Talks about uh, something about to do about the population. This equation has four factors, a little bit of multiplication. So you've got a thing on the left, CO2, that you want to get to zero. And that's going to be based on the number of people, the services each person's using on average, the energy on average for each service, and the CO2 being put out uh, per unit of energy. So let's look at each one of these and see how we can get this down to zero. Uh, probably one of these numbers is going to have to get pretty near to zero. Uh, that's back from high school algebra. But let's, let's take a look. Uh, first, we've got population. Uh, the world today has 6.8 billion people. That's headed up to about 9 billion. Now, if we do a really great job on new vaccines, health care, reproductive health services, we could lower that by perhaps 10 or 15 percent. All right, back to our bullet points. Bullet point number three. By 2030, double the agricultural productivity and incomes of small-scale food producers, in particular women, indigenous peoples, family farmers, pastoralists, and fishers, including through secure and equal access to land, other productive resources and inputs, knowledge, financial services, markets, and opportunities for value addition and non-farm employment. Bullet point number four. By 2030, ensure sustainable food production systems and implement resilient agricultural practices that increase productivity and production that help maintain ecosystems that strengthen capacity for adaptation to climate change, extreme weather, drought, flooding, and other disasters that progressively improve land and soil quality. Next bullet point, bullet point five. By 2020, maintain the genetic diversity of seeds, cultivating plants and farmed and domesticated animals and the related wild species, including through soundly managed and diversified seed and plant banks at the national, regional, and international levels, and promote access to the fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising from the utilization of genetic resources and associated traditional knowledge as internationally agreed. Um, you know, one thing I didn't you notice in this, and, and it will be definitely covered in a future uh, goal that they're talking about, gender equality. If you noticed in the text, the word man is never used. Women are talked about. Girls are talked about. Men are never mentioned. It's always just persons change because maternal love is the love that's going to change the future of mankind so we'd like you to look uh, we, we like to say people kind not necessarily mankind yes yes he's no longer uh, mankind according to the uh, globalist and agenda 2030 agenda 21 cabal men don't matter anymore it's it's, it's people kind right yeah Wonderful. No, it's still men. Still men and women, as far as this guy's concerned. And in all of this, these, these seeds and, and the cultivation of plants and that target goals will be achieved and, and you must go with the corporations that are you know, going to provide you these technologies and agreements will be made. Well, I think there's one definite company that comes to mind when it comes to the genetic, genetically modified or, organisms that uh, have plagued us of late and, and the control of seeds on the planet. And, well, let's look into it, shall we? 
Genetic engineering is a process where scientists take genes from one species and force it into the DNA of other species. Every single independent study conducted on the impact of genetically modified food shows that it damages organs, it causes infertility, it causes immune system failure, it causes holes in the GI tract, it causes multiple organ system failure. The whole concept of genetically modified organisms is throwing a monkey wrench in the life on this planet. What if we could produce more yield on the same amount of land, squeeze more water from a single raindrop, conserve natural resources while caring for the environment? Monsanto is the company that told us that PCBs were safe. They told us that Agent Orange was safe. They told us that DDT was safe. And now they're in charge of telling us if their own genetically modified foods are safe. The reason why we have 170 million acres of genetically engineered corn and soybeans and cotton and canola oil and sugar beets in the United States is because it doesn't have to be labeled. The first genetically modified animal, a salmon, may soon be approved for human consumption. Both these fish are 18 months old, but the larger genetically engineered Aqua Advantage salmon grows twice as fast as the regular salmon. There has not been sufficient animal health testing, human health testing, or environmental impact testing of these new transgenic fish. Basically, they've taken agriculture and built an industrial model which doesn't fit nature. So instead of changing their agricultural model to accommodate what is natural, they're changing nature to accommodate the industrial model. If you have an organic corn crop that sits next to a genetically engineered corn field, and it happens to tassel at the same time, and it happens to be downwind, you're going to get your crop contaminated. The rest of the food supply is contaminated. Then the genie is out of the bottle, and it's maybe physically impossible to turn the situation around. In the genetic engineering revolution, these seeds are now patented property of one corporation called Monsanto. The pharmaceutical industry has no interest in having you well because they don't make any money if you're well. And the pharmaceutical industry is the biotech industry. Some people think that GMO really means God move over. We are heading downhill at a rapid rate of speed toward our own extinction. The use of GM in agriculture is a risk that is simply not worth taking. Wouldn't it be just, wouldn't it just be a great future for, for the globalists to get everybody on the genetically modified food? That's going to be a sure grand way to bring down the population, will it not? We've seen the results here in the Americas with the increase of cancers, uh, the population, uh, I think it's something like 45, it's 45% or higher are now obese. People are not healthy. People are dying and the population's not growing. Yeah, Agenda 21 is steamrolling ahead just, just as they intended. All right, continuing. Their last two bullet points here. Increase investment, including through enhanced international cooperation in rural infrastructure, agricultural research and extension services, technology development, and plant and livestock gene banks in order to enhance agricultural productive capability, capacity in developing countries, in particular, least developed countries, correct and prevent trade restrictions and distortions in world agricultural markets, including through the parallel elimination of all forms of agricultural export subsidies and all export measures with equivalent effect in accordance with the mandate of the Doha development round. That one was a word. That was a very poorly written sentence by them. Adopt measure, next, bullet, next and last bullet point, adopt measures to ensure the proper functioning of food commodity markets and their derivatives and facilitate timely access to market information, including on food reserves, in order to help limit extreme food price volatility. So our buddy Bill Gates has got something to add to all of this. 
Take a listen. Productivity up, you want many factors working in your favor. You want better seeds. Uh, you want farmers to adopt the best seeds. The farmers have got to be a lot more educated because they can often grow two crops in a season and the way they deal with soil health by rotating the crops can make a big difference. They also need a credit system because if they don't have the money to get fertilizer, that alone will cut their productivity very substantially. And so that farmer education system the R&D to make those better seeds. By managing those things well, we predict that we'll get African productivity up to 1.5 times where it is today, and that will get Africa to the point where even with its population growth, uh, somewhat worse weather, instead of importing food, it will be able to feed itself. Improvements in critical infrastructure will further Africa's ability to feed itself. Investments in road improvements will allow food to move to places it needs to go and reduce the need for expensive air transport. Additional surpluses will be put away in improved storage to better position them for lean years. In the, um, down here in the resources tabs, there is a um, zero hunger challenge of the United Nations. And I went to the link as you see here in the video, and they have nice little pictures, very simple, basic to understand pictures, and you've got a bunch of Members of the United Nations holding up signs, a child looking for food, zero hunger, gold, hashtag zero hunger. I'm sure these people are all about it. What I found interesting, they have these links down here, take action for our featured campaigns, latest news in zero hunger. Now, this is what I found interesting. The last update was in November 29th of 2016. We're almost at a year and a half with any news updates from them and the one that seeing is how uh, the the conflict in the Middle East that has been escalating of late I went to um, to this link zero hunger challenge the UN's team in Jordan uses cranes to hoist relief aid to Syrian refugees at sealed border very quick little article Syrians stranded in a sealed border with Jordan have received life-saving food and other supplies from the United Nations in a unique operation that saw aid hoisted by crane and monitored by drones across the closed frontier blah 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 more than 75,000 people seeking escape now there's millions that have left uh, and again they say most are women children and elderly yet somehow the vast majority of people we see going into uh, Europe from the Middle East are and from Africa are men of fighting age. Look, when I when I'm talking down about what the United Nations is doing here, I'm not. I do feel for the people that are starving in the world. It's terrible. I live in the United States, in Southern California, and the homeless population out here, it's incredible how many homeless people we have. How many people are starving in California alone? And this is the breadbasket practically of the northern continent North, North American continent we have probably a couple of million people starving in California alone I'm not saying that I, I, I'm against feeding people I'm all for people being fed what I am critical of is what their ultimate goal is in this it's a, it's a wonderful idea to want to feed as many people as possible but the global elite they don't want a large population. This is all a scam. They want to bring the population down to a more sustainable level for them to easily control us. This is all, and it is ultimately, all of this is about control. Everything is about control. The state wants to have control of every facet of your life from cradle to grave. And if Agenda 2030 and all of its 17 parts are implemented, we will be monitored from cradle to grave, and the lives of the people will be shortened that much more with all of these 17 goals and plans that they have. As I continue to expose all of these goals, you will see that as plain as the sun shining in the sky. So this is the end of part two. Uh, the following part three coming up next week, I'm really shooting again to have it out hopefully by Thursday of this coming up week. I think that'll be the 19th, Thursday the 19th. Yes, it should be Thursday the 19th. I would like to have part three, goal three of Agenda 2030, good health and well-being. 
with that, I, uh, I'm going to depart. I hope you gain some uh, knowledge out of all of this and you're investigating it for yourself and sharing this information with people of like mind and maybe some people who might be open to this sort of information. Please like, share, and if you've not already subscribed to the channel, please consider giving the uh, channel a subscription. This is Savage signing out. We'll catch you next time. Take care.